And now, Storm Tracker 4 with meteorologist Brian Hale. Get ready for a pretty nice weekend ahead. We're talking about temperatures going on down through the upper 70s, so we'll bottom out about 78. That's your morning start temperature for Saturday. Southeast wind 7 to 12 miles an hour. Yeah, a little bit humid. Okay, we're used to that by now. Hey, summer's wrapping up. It's still going to be in the mid 90s for a valley average temperature for tomorrow. Upper Valley, expect 98, 99, and then everybody can expect to feel like 100 to 106 out there with the heat and with the temperature and humidity together, making it feel hotter. 20% uh, chance for showers in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'll explain why with Futurecast. 100 La Jolla, 93 Brownsville, but everybody, as I said, feeling well over 100 with that heat index. So be sure to take frequent breaks if you're working outside or at least drink lots of water. Make sure the pets have water and shade as well. Now here's your forecast for tomorrow afternoon with Futurecast. 20% chance for shower or thunder shower as the sea breeze blows on in out of the east. That is that cooler curtain of air coming in off the Gulf, nudging its way in and firing up a couple of showers or thunder showers. Light stuff, sporadic, it's here or there. If you encounter one, it's a couple of minutes and done. And the same is true for Sunday. So Sunday's forecast pretty much shakes out with the mid 90s and of course feeling more like 106 degrees. That slight chance for a shower or thunder shower in the afternoon. East southeast wind 10 to 15. Now, you got a friend with a pool, I'd suggest calling him up. Toot sweet. This is going to be a great weekend for that. Otherwise, head on over to South Padre Island. Great weekend for that as well. 88 degree air temperature, 85 degree surf temperature. Watch out for rip currents, of course, and make sure that you uh, are ready to dodge a little shower. But I'm thinking most of that will be inland. Uh, the chance along South Padre Island is mighty slim. Looking at the tropical outlook, it looks busy. Its bark is worse than its bite, people. What we're focusing on is primarily the Atlantic and what's going on in our neck of the woods from Africa on to Mexico. So, up next, in a few days, we'll have this next low coming off Africa. That stands a good chance of becoming something. Then we have a couple of other tropical disturbances on from the South Atlantic on toward the Caribbean. Okay, you've got my interest. So we're going to watch these two and make sure that they don't come near the valley. Uh, I've looked at some long-range models. It doesn't look good for them to come near us. And then Jerry is really the big game in town, and that's expected as a hurricane to head to the northwest into the western Atlantic. So here's the 80% chance that next one coming off Africa will develop. We'll keep an eye on it. 40% chance Invest 99 that's in the South Atlantic will become something in the arc toward uh, Puerto Rico. And then you've got Jerry, as I said, heading off toward Bermuda again, another storm heading that way. And then that area of interest in the Caribbean near, the, uh, near Haiti, that stands only a 10% chance of becoming something. And then moving toward Cuba and the Florida Straits. Again, not a threat to the valley overall. But we still are going to keep an eye on all those little buggers just to make sure everything is okie dokie. No threats in the Gulf or the Bay of Campeche for us this weekend at all. And you can see the extended forecast showing you that we're just going to, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste, control C, control V, all the way out through the end of that forecast. Maybe a better shot at showers on Monday. My forecast anytime you want it on Facebook forward slash storm tracker four and the bird word comes out of brian hale kgbt a little bit better a solid 20 percent opportunity rolling on into the afternoon as the sea breeze that cool curtain of air nudges its way into the valley and kicks up a few showers and thunder showers now as far as friday evening game time well overall things are going to be pretty good and they'll be pretty good in progresso as well because that's where we are going to be live enjoying the uh, kickoff to the game there at red ant stadium kickoff about 90 degrees by 7 7 30 and then you're going into about 88 degrees at half time. Winds will be out of the southeast 5 to 10 miles an hour more than likely. Now we're looking at the tropical outlook. That's been a big part of the forecast for several days. Things are a little bit less busy out there. Lorenzo's still a hurricane and all, but forecast to move on into open water. Tropical storm Karen may do a loop-de-loop. -loop. I'll show you. Uh, Jerry's just about done. And then off in the Pacific, that action is going to stay in the Pacific. Now, there goes Lorenzo as a hurricane on into the western Atlantic. And then Tropical Storm Karen's going to go up and woo, around it goes. And then maybe back toward the eastern U.S., but it might get caught up in the Gulf Stream and then veer off again. So it could do many loops. What's happening here is high pressure is blocking it, preventing it from going where it wants to go. So it does that little loop. Just like if you're driving and you can't go straight ahead, there's a detour, you got to turn and go around. That's what happens there. Now, the next weather maker is a big part of our forecast. It was that, uh, that area of low pressure off the Yucatan that was a big interest to the National Hurricane Center. It's not of interest anymore because all this thing basically is now is just a wandering low. And whether or not it's closed or just sort of drawn out and open as a trough, either way, it should be able to push enough moisture on up into the valley. Note the clock Saturday into Sunday. Push enough moisture, which is fuel for rain, and provide enough energy and lift to kick 
take off additional showers. I know, I could have said that in about five words or less, but nonetheless, we're expecting an increased chance for rain this weekend. Here you see it, Saturday and Sunday, 40% chance spiking and then back down to the 20%. So each day, though, this weekend, despite the clouds and the showers, we're still forecasting uh, 95 as a valley average high. So it's going to be hot and sticky. And that's true for the coast as well. We're going to have that chance for rain for everybody from South Padre Island to Rio Grande City. 100 degrees, that's the forecast for Harlingen, 98 at Brownsville, uh, 103 La Jolla. And again, that heat index, brutal. So be sure to check that back seat, parents and grandparents. Stay hydrated, even if you've got a short job to do outside. Stay hydrated, make sure the pets have water, and of course, check the AC filters as well. And speaking of the pets, if you're going to be out walking the dog, make sure that you stay on the grass or the gravel. When it's 90 degrees or greater outside, that pavement's 140 plus. You can fry an egg when it's 130. So again, just keep that in your mind. Now, looking at the Labor Day weekend, we're just going to keep on keeping on with hot southeast breezes, but we're bringing back the daily dose. Actually, it's early as Friday. We're bringing back that chance for a daily shot at a shower or thunder shower, and then rolling it on into Labor Day. Actually, we're going to increase it a little bit on into Labor Day itself. I'll show you why with future casts. The uh, South Padre Island forecast looks great too, although the air temperature a little warm, 90 degrees. The sand will be hot, you betcha, but the water will be around 80 degrees. Well, coming up in my full valley forecast, we're going to talk about the opportunity for more showers, the humidity, will it back off, and then of course the next weather maker. It involves a cold front, and it's next. And we're also looking at more moisture coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. So moisture from two directions, that means more fuel for more showers. So again, I'm not counting our chances out. No way, no how. Don't forget if you're out on the roads, decrease your speed and avoid hard braking and increase your distance uh, between you and the next person. That's always a good safety tip. Rainfall, do we need more rain anyway? Uh, yeah, we do. We're well behind anywhere from an inch and a, more than an inch and a quarter to more than two inches. So we need to play catch up. That tropical event in Mexico that's going to help push a little more, tropical depression, NARDA, that's going to continue to dissolve, but still push moisture our way. And as far as what's going on with Lorenzo, it's down to a category two and heading out to open water. So the next weather maker, I teased you with the chance of a cold front coming. Here we go. This is by the end of the week. All this week, we're going to notice the threat of low pressure coming our way and driving moisture our direction. That's fuel, as I said. So this thing's going to continue all week long and into the weekend to drive moisture our way. This is Saturday, next, this upcoming next weekend. Now we're expecting, you, you're thinking this is going to pounce on us, right? Nope, it's going to start to turn away. That's Sunday. Now watch Monday of next week. Oh, my word. Cooler, drier air coming down across Texas. The tail of a cold front is going to sweep that low away, and it's going to continue to give us the chance for showers into Monday. And then, as I said, just sort of whisk everything on down and away from the valley. This may be our first cold front of the season. It's a possibility. But this one in the Western Caribbean, while it only stands a 10% chance of becoming something more, it may very well be a rain generator, and it could be for us. But we've got the next weather maker coming down the pike, and that one promises to, well, maybe interrupt things. I'll show you. It's a two-parter. Here we go. Friday, this Friday into the weekend. This low, the one you saw that has a 10% chance of becoming something more, drifts into the southwest Gulf of Mexico. Here's the valley, and here we stand a chance for rain, right? Friday and Saturday, you bet. But then, uh-oh, is it going to come here? Nope, it's going to get shoved away by this cold front. You heard me talk about the cold front. Sunday on into Monday, the cold front comes down and it pushes that low away. So actually, Sunday, kind of sandwiched in between, might not see any rain at all. But then the cooler, drier air coming down Monday to Tuesday, that could generate some more showers. So again, there's Sunday sandwiched in between, and then there's Monday with a chance for showers, and then Monday night into Tuesday, the front comes on down and kicks up the chance for rain, because it's gonna be a slow mover. It's gonna take probably 24 to 36 hours to move through. First on four, you're gonna like this one, our chance for cooler temperatures becoming more of a reality. Chief Meteorologist Brian Hale joining us in the studio with a look at that first cold front. Brian, is it true? Well, it's mostly true, yes. <laughs> and it is in the forecast to come on in early next week, and it could, most importantly, drop our humidity and even cut temperatures a bit. So I'm going to have all of that coming up in my full forecast. Right now, we're still caught in this rut of warm, humid weather with a few showers and thunder showers pipping and popping around the valley. And we'll keep with this for a while. And you can see near Edinburgh, just a little shower there and off toward McCook. 
A little bit of activity there in Hidalgo County. Temperatures range from 86 to about 90 degrees across the valley, but humidity has helped to keep the feel like temperature up over 100 today for the most part. Temperatures will go on down near 80 degrees as we get closer to midnight, and we'll hold on to that 30% chance for a shower. There you can see the Edinburgh DHR health camera despite a shower in the area. Everything looks pretty good. But again, humidity, that's a big part of the forecast. Will it finally pull back a bit? Will it take a cold front to do it? And what happens when that front passes? I'll show you exactly what happens coming up in my full forecast.